Thank you for showing interest in this subject. If you are considering transitioning an orchid into inorganic media, having grown in organic media for quite some time, I've got a series going and today I'm going to be discussing transition after care. Because one would assume that now I've got my orchid into a much more water retentive environment, I don't need to water as much. And that to a degree is true. That is why this is also an advantage with growing inorganically in self-watering or semi-hydroponics, not just climate-based. But the aftercare is a little bit more tedious, let's put it that way. I'm not gonna mince my words here. It's a little bit more tedious because we are trying to get the roots to get adapted into a more water retentive climate. We are dealing mainly with epiphytes. In a terrestrial orchid situation, it's a little bit different because terrestrials and semi-hydro self-watering just go hand in hand. But when we're dealing with epiphytes, everybody always says orchid roots need to dry out. There's a wet dry cycle. That is what they're accustomed to out in nature being epiphytes. There's a lot of air movement and airflow around their roots. And yes, that is true. Growing out in nature, up in trees, on cliff rocks or anywhere else, that is exactly what the roots are accustomed to, a wet dry cycle. However, when you are transitioning into another media, inorganic, no matter what type of inorganic media, in my case, it's leka and pumice, and to some degree, lava rock, the whole environment of the pot is much, much wetter. So the thing with air around roots is there's oxygen. And what we're trying to do in our transition process is get roots to adapt to a wetter environment. And how do we provide oxygen to the roots, be they new roots or somewhat older established roots, while new roots grow, is to provide a lot of water. Because it is H2O, there is oxygen in water. And basically, that is how we can provide a lot of oxygen to the roots, even though we don't have the airflow as per a wet dry cycle out in nature. And that is why when it comes to transitioning, the first six weeks, maybe eight weeks, depending on the time of year, are quite important to keep your orchid roots that are growing, let's say enthusiastic about staying in the pot, staying healthy or growing in the pot. Because one thing that we do as well when we pour water into the pot, even though it is full of fresh oxygen, is gravity. So as we water the orchid from the top, and the water draws all the way down and through and out, gravity itself also pulls fresh air and oxygen into the pot. So we are keeping a clean cycle. Remember that this is only in the beginning phases after an orchid is established. Usually the flushing then is a regular thing between fertilizing so that we don't have salt accumulation on the pots. Right now, the care of transitioning an orchid, the focus being the aftercare, is keeping oxygen flow going through the pot and using gravity to our advantage. This little Leptotis bicolor is new to my collection and I used it as an example of how to transition an orchid, when to transition an orchid into inorganic media. You can see she's starting a new growth. That is so cool. The roots that we had in the beginning while they were starting to grow, they're still looking green, even though one might say, well, that's algae. No, that is not all algae. To some degree it is, but they are green. If they were dead, they would be brown. Like there's one right there in the middle. That's a dead one, at least at the surface. We don't know how it's faring in the pot, but I have no problem with occasional collateral damage of some roots that will fail throughout the transition process, like an 80-20% ratio. So you see, I'm trying to keep my leka away from the base because aftercare transition as well is to keep the base aerated. We don't want rot around there because we're using a lot of water. So I make sure that my base is clear and free. I make sure my new growths are clear and free as well, and then no matter the time of year, I pour water into this pot every third day. And I do it from all sides. Now, you can say, how much water do I need? 
That is relative to the size of the pot, but as long as you can see how abundant it is, that is all you need. You're adding oxygen to the pot and you're using gravity to pull air through it. And I've got here two liters, just plain RO water. The pre-transition care has been taken care of. I don't want to compromise any new roots growing or any roots that are in the pot right now by adding fertilizer at this point in time. That all has been done prior to potting the orchid up. Right now, it is all about getting oxygen and air through the pot. And every third day is best practice. Some people are heading into spring every third day. It matters not. It's not the time of year that we do this. The purpose of this is to get oxygen into the pot and keep it fresh. If there is anything going on in the pot that we cannot see, roots are dying, etc., this process will also flush out any kinds of molds or pathogens or bacteria if roots are rotting in here. So it cleans the entire pot through, fresh water, oxygen goes in, and we pull a little bit of air through because of gravity. Let me show you one that was transitioned recently as well. Here's a different one. This is the Miltonia Sunset or Mill Miltonia Sunset in my case. And this one was transitioned into pumice. In organic media, it doesn't matter. Pumice, Lekka, Lava Rock. Depends on the orchid, what kind of media you're using. And then it also depends on the root size and the climate that you grow in even if you're growing indoors and it's all very, very controlled. Same thing with pumice. Now this one's been around a little bit longer, same thing. There's a lot of air pockets in pumice already and we wanna keep those clean. I try to be very, very careful about flushing all the way to the top, simply because sometimes we've got new growths coming and we don't want those little bracts and leaf joints there to get wet and then cause rot. So again, the base of the orchid is well away from the wet media. What we're doing is putting plenty of air into the pot via our H2O and keeping the climate in there aerated by the use of oxygen every three days. And you can see that even here, I do have some collateral damage. There's a root right in the center that had stopped growing, but the other ones are all finding their way down beautifully. After transitioning, fertilizing is not the main focus. I want to make that 100% clear. We might forfeit a very large next new growth, but the fertilizer is secondary. Fertilizer can come into the equation at very, very low levels, maybe about three months after a transition. If the roots are growing really nicely into the pot, that is something that we need to look and be aware of. And if they're growing well into the pot, then you could possibly start a little bit sooner after two months with very, very dilute fertilizer. I would not push it, no matter which orchid, I would not push it beyond 100 parts per million. As roots grow, we need to keep the surface of the media clear of any mineral buildup. So my sunset has had her water and I'm filling the reservoir with fresh water again. And at the same time, if the roots are not all the way down in the pot, with the case of the Leptotus bicolor and my Milmoltonia, I make sure that the water level in my reservoir is a little bit higher so that the roots that are growing down will be encouraged to seek the moisture down below. Again, the gravity making them grow down and then the water and the oxygen being down here. So just a little bit more in the reservoir to counteract the level of the roots if they haven't grown all the way down into the pot. In a transition process now is my Dendrobium nobilis species variety Cooksonianum. Now, this is fall. We're heading into winter. At the time of filming and transitioning this orchid, we are in November. And this is not exactly what I would say the right time to be transitioning because this orchid is deciduous. But if the roots are growing the way they are, then my goodness, I will start my transition process regardless. But just because temperatures are starting to cool down, that doesn't mean the orchid doesn't want her oxygen in that pot. And in this case, I am still flushing every third day, no matter what. 
If it rains, great, the orchid can get a rain, but it has to have fresh water. Whether I'm in the heat of summer transitioning or I'm heading into winter transitioning. The takeaway from transitioning after care is the roots need oxygen. And our oxygen is in our water. And that is why flushing the pot through no fertilizer for at least three months. When you start fertilizing, have that fertilizer at no more than 100 parts per million, no matter what the orchid is doing. You would rather forfeit to get a nice big new growth than forfeit the roots. So you see, in the beginning, transitioning an orchid is a little bit more laborious than the actual setup itself within, let's say, six months. The first three months, we need to keep up with the oxygen flow throughout the pot. After that, we're good to go for the next two years, maximum three years before we have to address a thorough root ball cleanup. There is no difference with organic growing as opposed to inorganic growing to keep the climate of the pot healthy. But the first three months, flush every third day, clean, plain water, and if the pH is seven, great. If the pH is above seven, reduce the pH to seven. There's no need to pH down because we're not fertilizing. So that takes a little bit of a complication factor out of the equation. Keep the base of the orchid above the media, let the roots find their way in, and do not flush all the way up to the top of the base because we don't want that to rot out. We want the airflow all the way across just to make sure that what we're focusing on is happening in the pot. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that anybody who is in the process of transitioning an orchid found this video useful and informative. And if you have any questions beyond what I've just spoken about and what the aftercare is with regards to the first three months, then please feel free to address those in the comments below. Be very, very happy to answer any specific examples of orchids that you might be having in your collection. Root size doesn't matter. Any kind of inorganic media does not matter. Pot size does not matter. Time of year does not matter. What matters is oxygen into the pot. And for us in this setup, self-watering and semi-hydro, hydroponics in general, it is the water that brings the oxygen into the pot. Thank you very much for watching. Your time is appreciated. Have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful day on one condition that you stay safe. Please take care. Bye.